Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Please welcome Master Instructor Anders Motz. Hello. And Master Instructor Andy Hagerman. How you doing? And myself, Normal Instructor Dave. We take you into the workings of Pro Tools and Ethos to help the user community better understand Avid's flagship app. Uh, before we jump into today's question, we want to give a massive shout out to our Inner Circle members. Thank you to Gregor, Mike, Ben, Eric, Malik, Constance, Michael, William, Donald, Chris, Rick, Klaas and Felipe. Uh, we had a terrific masterclass with you guys on Tuesday. Thank you to all of you guys that came. Uh, we look forward to, the, to seeing you, the ones that didn't um, in the next one. Uh, it was an awesome time, Anders. The conversation was incredibly inspiring. Inspiring. Yeah, it was fantastic. And uh, that hour went by so fast, we, we ended up adding <laughs> more time. <laughs> we, us we usually do. I mean, we, yeah. al we always set out to, to do a two minute show every week. Yeah. And we yeah, always end up on 40. That's just how our masterclasses run too. Yeah. We can't help it. Mm. We just waffle. Um, in this quiz, in this week's question, uh, we're going to, well, in this week's episode rather, we're going to be looking at a question from Use. We hope that's how it's pronounced. Um, his question is a simple one. Uh, it says, what should this be on to have the best results? And he has an image showing the disk playback cache, mm. of which it's only showing up to five gigabytes. <laughs> um, so where are we going to go with this one, Anders? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the disk playback cache is a fantastic feature in Pro Tools. And... Um, uh, maybe Andy, uh, you can give us a little bit more background to how, how that uh, came about. All right. Yeah, and and I think the it, sleeves it, are rolling up. It's a serious. Yeah. Subject. Sorry. Mm. <clears throat> there we go. Um, oh. Uh, uh, you can't get that with a sample. Um, <laughs> you, you know, it's the, the playback cache is is a great feature, but it's also mi misunderstood to the point where it's usually used backwards. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so let, let me let me kind of um, talk about what it does and, and what it's designed to help. So when you turn on the disk playback cache, so Anders is going to go into the playback engine uh, and at the bottom it says cache size. Now let's 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 break it down. Normal is is essentially a, a dynamic cache and what will happen is Pro Tools will look at the, the timeline, the amount of media that's on the timeline, and it sets up a, a cache of in the in the uh, in your system's RAM, in order to accommodate the the media in on the timeline itself. Now, what I just said there is a little bit of a simplification, but that's generally the gist of it, right? So it's, it's is, is it is it is it true that it uh, when I click in the timeline anywhere, it will start buffering about half a second of time starting on that particular play yes location. like i said what i said was a simplification but yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah okay. you know so it's 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 anyways it, it basically figures out how much space in the ram it needs and it mm -hmm. says i need this to play this is all i'm going to take i'm going to leave the rest of the ram alone so that you can use that ram for things like plugins and other kinds of processing right mm -hmm. um for most users this is the setting you want Especially if you have a fast hard drive, right? Especially if you have a fast hard drive. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you open this up, um, you're going to see basically a list of of different RAM sizes. Now, this this guy, whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, um, he's it goes up to five gigabytes. And so, my guess is, is that image is coming from a Windows computer? Oh, that's a good question. Um... I, it, it's in, indeterminable actually okay. with, the, with the image. So, so based upon, I think it, he's probably got like eight. That's gigs what he's got in his yeah. system. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what will happen is is the Pro Tools will reserve either three or four gigabyte, depending upon your your system configuration, depending upon whether it's a Mac or not, uh, Mac or or PC. And so, what if if you see five, it means he's got a total of eight gigabyte of RAM. Now that's not a lot. Right, so you want to kind of protect that RAM for things like plugins. Okay, now here's what's going to happen, and so um, I, Anders, I'm going to do something. I'm going to direct you to do something wrong. So I'm going to tell you right now, so yep. that you don't you don't fight me on it like you always do. Mm -hmm. um, now go, go ahead. I want you to go and choose 512 megabytes. Uh, 
Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> complying. I'm doing what you say. <laughs> now, now, this is probably less than what than all of the media in, in his session. I'm hoping that's the case. I think the, the audio media. The audio media, yep. So go ahead and click OK. And what you're going to see in the, in the system usage is you're going to see this disk playback cache, and it goes all the way up, goes to 100%, and it stays amber. Okay? Now, what that means is it's filled up 100% of that cache, that, that allocated space in his memory, but because it's yellow, what does that mean? It's not, it's, it's not all of uh, it. It's not cached all of the timeline. It hasn't cached all of it. Now, let's let's back up a little bit. Why would you Why would you want to copy your audio into RAM? Uh, well, in my particular case, it's I've I've got most of my sessions saved on my NAS storage right. drive, which is in the room behind me, mm -hmm. and it's uh, connected via a standard LAN cable which is, in fact, too slow to be streaming audio off of, or it can be too slow, at least, when the, when the track counts get higher. That's right. Uh, so, so in my case, I need to use the disk cache to cache all of the audio into the RAM memory and stream it from the memory instead of streaming it from the hard drive, because the hard drive probably won't be able to keep up. Right, and, and, and let's, let's exp and that's, that's a, a, a network drive with a single user. I have an answer. I have an answer to Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, if I may. Yes. Um, yep. So, if, if you're streaming a high sample rate session um, from a USB 2 hard drive. Yeah. You might. Yep. Depending upon or the number of tracks. a lot of tracks. Yep. You got a with lot. A, with a lot of tracks. So, mm -hmm. so, even if you have a fast hard drive, at some point you're running into a disk throughput put error. And mm -hmm. basically and, and, the hard drive can't keep up. Now, primarily this, this was designed with people that are using network drives and multiple users using the same mm -hmm. network drive. So for example, at NHK mm -hmm. here in Japan or, 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 at, or at Skywalker Sound, you know, where everybody's mm -hmm. pulling audio from, from a single storage location. At some point, that, that location is going to fall over because you're, you're asking it to do too much, even, even if it's a, a high-end server designed for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when you copy the audio over into your RAM, well, it's not playing from that drive anymore. It's playing from your RAM. That's, the, that's why they call it a playback cache. Now, because it's amber, it says we haven't copied all of it, which is kind of like it's, it's defeating the purpose, right? So, so mm -hmm. it's going gonna, it's gonna to play some of the audio from, from RAM, it's going to play some of the other audio from the hard drive. So let's let's go ahead and change that size a little bit. Um, Anders, do you do you have any sense as to how much uh, this is actually? Um, yeah, when I mouse it show, over it the him. disk cache meter, it actually shows <coughs> me that the disk cache is currently set to 512, but the timelines is 3.2 gigabytes. Now that's the timeline. Um, you may also want to cache the stuff that's in, in your clips list. Maybe maybe yes, maybe no. So it's, it's the stuff on the timeline. So let's go with, um, Anders, you're doing great. Um, mm -hmm. 3.2 gigabytes. Let's go to 4 gigabytes. Okay. So going to 4. And when I hit the OK button now, keep an eye on the disk cache. It will start recaching, and it will cache up to a point where it's actually cached all of the 3.2 gigabytes, and the meter will, at that point, turn green as an indication that it's cached all of the timeline and that I can press play and it will play from RAM. That's right. So right now, look at this cache meter. It's starting yes. to recache everything. So it's basically extracting that information from the audio files folder, reading it into so RAM. It should go up to about like 80%. It a couple of minutes. And in a couple of seconds, it will reach... There we go. Ah, there you go. Yep. That's all of the timeline cached. That's right. Now, at that point, um, it's not really relying on the audio hard drive for playback. Now, when you're recording, is it recording to RAM or is it recording to the hard drive? It's recording to your hard drive. Okay. It's also st storing it in RAM at the same time. But but you do need the hard drive for recording, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. but, the, but for playback, mm -hmm. this is this is it. This is great. Fantastic. Well, yeah. well, why don't we turn it on all the time? Because Anders has just taken four gigabytes of RAM off the table for plugins. Mm. Yeah, uh, and and the thing is, reserving a memory for for this, 
uh, is is a great thing for, for me in this case. It's a well-invested RAM storage, but people might not realize that when you're, they are doing this, they are decreasing the amount of available RAM for your computer and allocating that for, for timeline, which can be great and it might be the thing that you want to be, be doing. But remember, Pro Tools can only show the RAM that is being used by Pro Tools. So right now I'm using 7% of the audio uh, uh, of the memory for for audio and eight percent of the video, but uh, it cannot show you how much memory other applications are using. And one of the problems that people run into is they are looking into this memory meter, seeing I've only used fifty percent of RAM, but Pro Tools craps out all the time, telling me I I don't have enough RAM. And that is if you have a lot of background tasks going on. Maybe you've got a, a, a Google Chrome browser open with 20, uh, 20 tabs, tabs of, <laughs> of Facebook or YouTube that has been mm. uh, caching up in the memory. And, and Google Chrome will never, ever complain that it's running out of RAM, but Pro Tools will. And, and, and like, let's go back to the original question. That guy's got eight gigabyte of RAM, so he's not yeah. he's not flush with RAM at all. So it actually makes it an easy question to answer. The disk cache should be set to normal. Yes, because he doesn't he doesn't have in that system he doesn't have a lot of RAM to to play with. So get you know get a hard drive that's fast enough to to take care of your tracks, and and you know if you're doing any kind of processing at all, you're going to need that RAM. So so generally yeah. speaking, you want to leave it on normal. A, 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 <laughs> an appropriate hard drive and an appropriate connection as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a USB three will do it. USB C. Um, Thunderbolt, USB, if you're working off of an older USB 2, though, you may struggle in certain scenarios. And people seem to forget that. They think that buying a, uh, an SSD makes for an indestructible and uh, it's like a lightning fast connection that has no limits. But mm. that's not true. If, if you're streaming, like Dave said, a 96K session and you've got 120 audio tracks, just do the math. How much data does it need mm -hmm. to throughput, right? So I think that concludes this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. The answer is don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> In your specific scenario, don't touch it. Okay, so can I, can I just interject with one last thing? Sure. Um, is, is it right that if we select, say, 15 gig in our disk cache, but we only have a timeline of, you know, Anders 3, does that mean that that 16 gig is reserved, specifically reserved for the disk cache? It's a and great. it makes it unavailable completely, even though we're using three gigs of, of timeline it's data? A fantastic do we waste, question. Do we, do we waste that RAM? And the, that's a fantastic question, and the answer is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the place to come for definitives thank you definitive Andy answer. we'll move on thank you very much to all of you for watching and we're out uh, so so, so um, in, in, in the summer of 2021 prior to that the answer to that question was yes and so what would happen so Anders has got this computer here and, and he's not going to click okay because let's just not but he's chosen the highest level which I want to oh, oh, fine go ahead um, it's not going to make any difference um, but you know, people would choose the highest cache size, and this is prior. More is better. And more is better, right? And <laughs> and what it would basically be doing is it would be bringing the system to its absolute knees because there's only three or four gigabytes left. So in other words, that cache would reserve that space even if it wasn't being used, okay? Since mid-2021, that's changed. You still want to be careful, but what will happen here is if Andrews, who's desperate to click the OK button. Um, if he clicks OK with the 60 gigabytes of his 64 gigabyte installation, if he clicks that, it will not change the amount of available RAM. But what it will do is every time he adds more audio to the timeline, it's going to use up more and more and more and more of that RAM up to the 60 gigabyte limit. Yeah, let's uh, look at the memory meter. I'm using 15% of the memory in my computer right now for Pro Tools. And if I reserve 60 gigs for cash, according to Andy, uh, this number shouldn't change. And uh, looking at the memory meter here, you can see it's re-buffering <coughs> the, the disk cache again. 
and uh, it seems to take a lot longer. This well, no, it's, 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 it's you're, it's, you're you're pouring data in as fast, but you're pouring it into a bigger bucket, so it's going to go to about yeah. like like ten percent, and then oh, there you go, five percent, we're done. Yeah. So and and as look at this, the memory meter. I'm still using fifteen percent of of my my RAM. Uh, so no, it will not automatically kill your computer, but it, but it might in the end. But it but it could, and I I would dare yeah. I would say that that's still kind of a risky way to 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 think of disk playback cache because if you start dragging more and more stuff in there, could you fill up that sixty gigabyte? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and and yeah. That... okay. So so will it will it fill up all of the the clips list, all of the extra stuff on the clips list as well? Will it start using it for that? It will mm -hmm. only do timeline the timeline the timeline. I thought yep. so. But it's but it, same kind of thing. But you know, adding more tracks, doing all that stuff, would reduce the amount of RAM that you have available for plugins. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it it again. I I would say if you've got a hard drive that's that's up to the task of playing back your audio, there's no reason to cache it. <laughs> Especially if you've got only eight gigabytes of RAM. The only possible argument is that mm -hmm. when when you're navigating your session and going to different places, the performance is a little bit less sluggish. But how much of a premium you, you place on that is up to you. you know, so going memory locations and stuff like that, it'll immediately start playing back because it's playing back from RAM, which is faster. But, but the, the pay, there's no free lunch here, right? All the audio that you cache into your hard drive means that much RAM is less for other things. <clears throat> yep. Terrific stuff. But that's a great question, Thank you. Dave. Well, you're very welcome. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Thank you very much to uh, to you guys. A really interesting discussion, uh, opening up more information about disk caching. Uh, thank you to Anders for all the demonstrations. Ma thank you. Magnificently done, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gr Grammy, it's Grammy nominatable. And thank you very much to Andy. You bet. <laughs> thank you very much to all of you guys for watching. If you haven't done so yet, uh, hit subscribe on our YouTube channel, especially if you're a Pro Tools user. Uh, this is the place to get all of your uh, Pro Tools information and for free as well. And uh, if you you can hit uh, like on our video, that really helps us and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we release our new videos. I think that's still a thing. I haven't looked for ages. I keep saying it. I never look to see if it, the bell icon is still a thing. Um, hey, you can head over to ProSourceAnswers.com, uh, find out what we're up to over there. And you can subscribe to our inner circle as well if you fancy, take, you fancy taking that next step and helping to support the show as I said all of the stuff we do is for free um, we're a community uh, funded uh, operation here and the uh, the inner circle members get a whole bunch of membership uh, membership benefits uh, for being involved in that to say thank you for their support so if you fancy doing that please uh, head over there um, so thank you very much for watching uh, we'll see you in the next one my name's Dave this is Pro Tools Answers and we're out <laughs>